When you're expanding your base, you'll always need to have walls to keep the biters out. If you're lucky, you'll be able to find narrow choke points between lakes, keeping your walls nice and short. If you're less lucky, they may need to cover quite a long distance. Either way, you'll need to keep up a steady supply of gear to replace anything that gets damaged. In this video, I'll show you how I set up resupply trains to bring all the needed materiel to my outposts and keep them safe. Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio. For this demonstration, I shall build up an outpost and discuss what's needed to completely automate the defences. You don't want to be having to run out here every time the biters take out a piece of wall or the guns run out of ammo. You want to be able to just build it and then forget about it, just trusting that it will stay safe. This is especially true if you're playing space exploration and might be off on a completely different planet when an attack comes in. The first thing is to decide how you want to design your wall. I generally start with a wall a single block thick, as more than this is rarely necessary in my experience. You can then add dragon's teeth on the front, or more elaborate systems to confuse the biters, slow them down and bunch them up if you wish. I'll put in three rows of dragon's teeth using copy and paste to make it much easier to lay down large numbers. Now we can arm the wall by adding in some turrets. You have a choice here, because in vanilla Factorio there are three types of turrets available. Bullet turrets do more damage than laser turrets, and they don't need power, but they do have a shorter range and they require ammunition. On the other hand, laser turrets use a lot of power, and you need to use more of them to compensate for the lower damage output. Early on, I tend to use bullet turrets, switching over to lasers later once I've got a very robust power generation system and a few levels of additional laser damage researched. This switch will save you a fortune in iron, copper and uranium, as you won't need to make any more ammo. Make sure you leave a gap between the wall and the turrets, as biters can bite buildings directly behind walls. The third type of turret is the flame turret. These are fantastic for large waves of biters because whilst the other two types will only hit a single biter at a time, flame turrets will damage all the biters in the area they hit, plus they leave burning oil on the ground which will damage any further biters which run into that area. I wouldn't want to rely solely on flame turrets as they have a minimum range and they aren't great for single moving targets, however they are fantastic for softening up a big wave of biters, allowing your bullet or laser turrets to finish them off. They do require fuel to be brought to them in a pipe, however, so you'll need to adapt your wall design to allow for this. I generally have a solid wall of turrets, with flame turrets spaced every so often along it, like this. I can use underground pipes to pass the fuel along, with minimal disruption to the turrets. You could put the flame turrets behind the gun or laser turrets, however this would reduce the effectiveness because the biters would spend less time on fire. The final element of my defensive wall is a row of roboports, some way back from the wall. This allows you to automate the building the wall if you wish, although I usually end up building it myself with my personal robots because I'm impatient, and is how we're going to ensure that the damage doesn't build up, eventually causing the wall to crumble. Once you have a design that you're happy with, you can copy it and then paste it repeatedly to quickly spec out a large area of wall for your defences. You can rotate it to run north-south as well. I would also recommend that you consider designing a blueprint for a diagonal wall, these follow much the same design criteria, but remember that flame turrets cover a 90 degree arc in a cardinal direction, so you should use them in pairs to ensure full coverage. Where a wall meets a lake, I recommend using landfill to push the wall further out into the lake to ensure that more turrets have the shoreline in range. This is especially important as biter assault groups often follow coastlines. It also ensures that if you're playing with a mod that adds shallow water, you don't accidentally leave a way past the wall. Try to keep your wall straight if you can. A convex wall, that is, an external corner, tends to be very vulnerable as the point of the corner will often take the brunt of attacks. This is because it's defending a larger angle out of the front of your base and because the shape tends to lead to fewer turrets being in range of the biters as they attack. Concave, that is, internal corners, don't have this problem, but with some mods you can risk your turrets damaging your own wall with splash damage. The main problem, however, with concave walls is that unless you're very careful, the construction robots will fly over hostile territory when going out to repair the wall. This can lead to them being brought down by spitters, which you don't want to happen. The best way I've found to get around this problem is to split the robo network at the corner, making two separate construction areas. This does, of course, bring its own complications for supplying the system. 
Speaking of supplies, that brings me neatly on to the next part of the video, ensuring that the wall can be kept shiny and maintained. As the biters attack, it's inevitable that the walls will pick up a bit of damage, ammunition will be consumed, maybe a turret will be destroyed. We need to keep bringing spares out to repair and rebuild. You could set up a system where trains bring out a wagon of ammo, a wagon of laser turrets and so on, but this would be very expensive in parts and would require a massive array of stations or a single very long station. Instead, what I like to do is set up a single resupply train that has a sensible amount of all the parts required and will head out to an outpost station whenever it's needed. Let's build a small station here by the wall and put down a resupply train. One locomotive, one cargo wagon and one fluid wagon. Now I'll add in chests for all the things that we're going to bring in. We'll need walls, spare turrets and flame turrets which should all be put into either yellow or red chests so the bots can pick them up and use them as required. We'll need construction bots and repair packs, but let's load those straight into the RoboPort instead of putting them in chest first. If you're using bullet turrets, you'll also want chests for belts, bullets and probably the inserters to load the guns. They're always getting hit by splash damage from spitters. Also, add in a pump and a fluid tank to allow the fluid wagon to be unloaded and connect the fluid tank to your flame turrets. There are a number of ways you can organise to make sure that the right supplies are unloaded. The simplest is to use a different filter inserter for each item type. These can be set to run until their box contains the right amount of that item. This is the way I've typically set these stations up in the past, however if you want to show off your circuit network skills, you could have everything unload into a single box. I'll show you how to do that after I've set everything else up as it's, it's very much an extra credits design. Now I'm going to set up my minimum stock list for the outpost. This goes in a constant combinator as the negative of the number of an item that I want to have. So, I'll set minus 20 turrets, minus 20 flame turrets, minus 10,000 light oil, minus 100 walls, minus 100 repair packs, and minus 20 construction bots. This means that if we have enough of something, the items and those signals will cancel out and we'll have zero or a positive number. If we're short of any item, it will show a negative number allowing me to request a train. Next up, I'll wire my, up my inserters to the RoboPort and to the tanks and program them. I'm going to set the numbers here so I have twice my minimum of everything. If I don't go beyond the minimum then every time a piece of wall gets used up a train will come out to replace it and that's a bit wasteful. So as I'm saying that I want to have an additional 20 turrets I set this inserter to pass just turrets over as long as there's less than 20 on the signal. I also want an extra 100 wall, 100 repair packs and 20 construction bots. But you can change these numbers if you want to fiddle with the maximum and minimum values. Note that the RoboPort by default outputs the number of construction bots as T in order to allow you to differentiate between robots in the RoboPorts and ones in storage. In this case we want to know the total so it's fine to change the T to a construction bot for, for simplicity. Also note that at this point you can either use read logistics network contents on the RoboPort or you can connect to the chests. I'm going to use the RoboPort. Don't do both of these, as then you'll end up counting everything twice and it'll throw all your numbers off. We're getting on well. Now, if a train turns up, the inserters will unload it until we have the maximum amount of everything. So, let's think about how we're going to summon a train. Place down a decider combinator, wire the supplies signal to the input, and the output to the station. Open the combinator and choose to trigger when the green star, which means anything, is less than zero. This means that if the total quantity of any item drops below the amount set in the constant combinator, then we'll get a negative signal for that item and the combinator will trigger. When it does trigger, I want it to output one L signal, which will be passed on to the station. If we now configure the station to set its train limits to L, the default, then the station will be activated when the outpost starts to run out of a supply ingredient. Make sure the constant combinator is set up, then you should see the train limit change to 1. We are now finished with the outpost station, so we can start to think about the other end, the supply station. The good news is, is that this part is much, much easier to set up. Run supplies of all the things your outpost needs to your station and fill chests with them so you've got some buffer. Then add an inserter for each chest and a pump for the tank to load the train and a fueling system for the locomotive. Dead easy. Finally, we need to configure the train. Make sure it's not sitting in a pickup station as it will fit up, fill up with excess cargo if it is. Open the cargo wagon and add filters for everything we want it to carry. You can do this by middle clicking on a slot in the wagon and choosing the item. 
or by holding an item in hand and middle clicking. You'll want enough in there to completely load a station. So let's have four stacks of turrets, four of walls, four of repair packs, two of flame turrets and two of bots. If you're using bullet ammunition, you'll probably want to have 10 or 15 stacks of that as it tends to get used up in much larger quantities. If there are any spare slots left over, assign them to an item type which you're not using, perhaps fish or green circuits. These slots will always remain empty. Now open the locomotive and set it to travel between the two stations. You'll want it to depart when idle because it will probably never be completely full or completely empty. Because of this, it's important to ensure that your supply station never runs out of any of the supplies because if it does, the train may end up in a loop, travelling to an outpost, not having anything to unload, coming back, going out, coming back and so on forever. Once you've done this, fuel the train and set it going. It will fill up at the supply station and then automatically depart to the outpost stations whenever it's required. One train can supply any number of outposts, at least as long as they aren't too busy. Now you can be sure that your outposts will be kept supplied and you can concentrate on other parts of your factory without feeling like you have to babysit them. I hope you found that useful. If you have, please subscribe to the channel. I intend to keep making these tutorial videos for as long as I have any ideas for them, so please leave any other suggestions in the comments. Now for the extra credits. Single chest design. This works in exactly the same way, except that we program the filter inserter with the items that need to be moved. Set up another constant combinator with your requested supplies, but as positive numbers this time. Then use an arithmetic combinator to multiply the current stored supplies by minus one. And pass both signals to the filter inserter. Open the filter inserter and select set filters. This will configure the filter inserter to pass through anything which has less in the chest than the constant combinator is set for. Make sure you check the numbers to ensure that everything will fit in a single chest. Note that this method is actually worse than the other one. It's slower and more complicated, however I thought I'd mention it in case you wanted to show off with your circuit designs. Another addition I often make to my resupply train is to put an artillery wagon on the back of it. My theory is that if an outpost is getting through its supplies, that probably means that some biters have expanded out near to it, so the artillery will get rid of them. This can be a little bit dangerous, as it can lead to large attacks on your outpost walls when you're not watching and expecting them, but in general it tends to be okay because the biters expand fairly slowly, and so you're probably only going to be shelling a small nest. This is most likely to go wrong after you've just finished a range upgrade research. The supplies brought out by the trains can be expanded if you wish. Some mods offer things like air purifiers which need filters bringing to them, and there's no reason not to add those onto this train as well, allowing it to visit multiple different types of outposts. This can be expanded out to anything which is needed in small quantities in different places around the base. You could even have different outpost trains for different types of outposts. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this system, please let me know in the comments or come along to a Monday night stream to ask me directly. There'll be some Factorio catch-up videos to show how we're getting on with space exploration at the weekend and a Dyson Sphere program video too. See you there!